This place, first of all, is lucky still to be here. It's lucky not to have burned down. Theatres traditionally burned down. Um, it was lucky, for instance, uh, in surviving and uh, from its foundation in 1818 to 1870. By 1870, it was a ruin. Uh, and then a man came along with a, with a grand vision, Romain de Delator, lovely name for a showman, uh, wanted to build the equivalent the, uh, of, of a musical called the Alhambra in the Leicester Square, wanted to build the equivalent uh, south of the river. Uh, result is he built this most beautiful uh, interior uh, and uh, thereupon promptly in two years um, went bankrupt but left left that again as, 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 his, as his legacy. It was then lucky to be um, to be run by Emma Cons for 32 years. Lucky indeed that she didn't even put a single play on in, in 32 years. What did that do? It preserved the fabric. Highly unusual for a theatre. Then we get Lillian Bayliss. Now there is a monomaniac. And there for a theatre is the greatest good luck. You need a monomaniac to run a theatre, which she did. But did she create the, 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 the reputation of the old Vic as a Shakespeare theatre? She did not. Um, she didn't want, uh, she didn't want uh, Shakespeare at first. There was a, a woman called Rosina Philippi. Um, who, who really wanted to put on Shakespeare here so that she could put her daughter in the leading roles. But the idea was here. And then a man called Ben Gree walked through the door. Now the date is 1914. This is the beginning of the First World War. You might think it's an impossible time to start putting on theatre Shakespeare seasons because many theatres were closed. But because many people, many theatres were closed, Actors were prepared to work for very little indeed. And Mr. And Ben Greet, who'd just come back from America, where he'd done about a dozen uh, seasons of, of, of Shakespeare all around America, um, came from a naval family, he wanted to do his duty, was too old to go in the Navy, um, saw it as his duty to produce seasons of Shakespeare at the old Vic. It, it began like that. Then again, this theatre was lucky quite beyond belief in 1980 when it really was on its uppers. It was unbelievably fortunate to be bought by a Canadian, by a Canadian who'd never been to London, by a Canadian who had never seen the old Vic, by a Canadian who didn't hear that it was up for sale until three days before the deadline for putting in, putting in a bid. Ah, lucky beyond belief. And then when he came here prepared to spend a million pounds on it. His architects told him it was going to cost him two. He said, spend two. Well, how like it can you get? Then again, we come up to Kevin Spacey. What, what, what are the chances? What are the chances of, 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 of finding an actor with two Oscars who wants to run a theatre? Who, want, you know, who, who wants to run the OVIC? So, luck. I suppose one I was present at, this is in the 60s, in the late 60s. This is Laurence Olivier. Um, this is the Merchant of Venice. Here's Shylock. And what I vividly remember didn't even take place on stage, it took place off stage. It's the end of the play. Shylock has been condemned to lose his suit. He has been condemned to give up all his property. He's been told above all that he has to give over his religion, that he has to convert, that he has to give up his Jewishness. And Olivier, on stage, took all these blows and then walked off stage and then from off stage came the most unearthly bloody howl you ever heard in your life, which was Olivier mourning. That's what I want.